Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Root Beer here, and I hope you're all doing well. We're going to start taking a look at the 2018 Euclid Math Contest put out by the University of Waterloo. If you'd like a copy of this contest, as with all the contests I, I go through, you can get a copy by clicking the very first link in the description. And I really try and encourage you guys to, to try that out, practice it. It's a great indicator of how well you can actually do uh, on, on the upcoming Euclid or whatever upcoming contest you're interested in writing. A few things to note if you are going to be writing the Euclid. It's two and a half hours. There are two types of questions. Some indicated by light bulbs just require a final answer. You usually just put it in a box in the booklet. And then there are the uh, questions indicated by uh, a hand writing on paper. You have to write out all the details of your solutions, justify things if you want all marks. There's 10 questions, uh, 10 marks per question, and I'm just going to go through one question per video. And we'll start with question number one here. So we've got two light bulb questions where we just need the final answers, and then as usual, one C is a written solution question where we've got to show our work. So 1A, if x is equal to 11, what is the value of x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 plus x plus 3? Now you could take that 11 and, and say, well, 11, 11 plus 1 is 12, plus 2, 13, and plus uh, 3, 14. You could grab your calculator and add these up, and that would be perfectly fine. You don't even need to use your calculator if you can... Uh, add them in your head or add them really quickly, 23, 27. So I know the answer is going to end up being 50. But another way we could do it, and uh, I'm going to write it down in, in my notepad here as I try to for each question. Now, by the way, for the light bulb questions, you can write things down. Uh, you can do this. You don't have to in order to get full marks. If you have the right answer, you have the right answer, and that's fine. But if you're worried you might not have the right answer, then writing down a little bit of your work in the uh, space provided for the light bulb question, you can still get part marks if you are wrong. Okay. So one thing I might do is instead say, well, how many x's have we got? We've got four x's, and then we've got a one, a two, and a three left over. So all we're doing is rearranging this, and then saying, okay, x is eleven. So four times eleven is forty-four. Forty-four plus six. We get that same answer of 50, and that is what we're looking for, but less work. I don't have to do 11 plus 12 and then plus 13 plus 14. Not a big deal, I know, if, we, if we've got our calculator, but you know, if we forgot our calculator or you know, if we're very good at algebra, this saves a little bit of time uh, if we're, we're a bit stuck. Anyway, so we just need 50 for our final answer for 1a. How about 1b? If a over 6 plus 16 over 18 is equal to 1, what is the value of A? Okay. Now there's lots of ways we could go about doing this. It was equal to 1, right? Yeah. So one thing we could do is get a common denominator, multiply by 3, and say 3A uh, plus 6 all over 18 is going to be equal to 1, and of course 1 we don't even have to write that. We could write 18 over 18. And then this tells me that 3a plus 6 is equal to 18. Subtract 6 from both sides. 3a is equal to 12. Divide by 3a is equal to 4. Now that, that's a fine way to, to do the question, certainly. You'll, you'll get the final answer of 4. You'll be all set. But you don't have to do it that way. You could immediately recognize, as I did as I was reading it out, 6 over 18, well, 18 is a multiple of 6, so they're kind of being sneaky. What this really says is a over 6 plus 1 third is equal to 1. Now, it's very easy for me to do a little arithmetic in my head. 1 minus a third is 2 thirds. So I know a over 6 is 2 thirds, and depending on whether or not you want to cross multiply, you can get the... 3a is equal to 12 as well. Or you might be able to say, well, 3 times 2 is 6, so 2 times 2 should be a. And you can get a is 4 that way. But again, either way, it's a light bulb question, so we do just need that final answer of 4. And I'm sure there are other ways you could actually write it out. Uh, but we're, we're just, it's a light bulb question, so we focus on just the final answer. Okay, so c. 
Now we actually have to write things up. The total cost of one chocolate bar and two identical packs of gum is four fifteen. One chocolate bar costs one dollar more than one pack of gum. Determine the cost of one chocolate bar. Okay, so we have a, a little bit of a, sort of an algebra thing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let C equal price of the chocolate. And G will be the price of the gum. And I'll specifically say one of the, the packets of gum. Okay. So I'm done the question when I can figure out C. Because that's the cost of one chocolate bar. All right, now we know two things. We know uh, the cost of one chocolate bar and two packs of gum. And we know one chocolate bar costs more than one pack of one gum. So we know C is $1 more than one pack of gum. And 415 is C plus two packs of gum right? 4.15 here at the end. Okay, well, I have an expression for C. You might call this 1 or something like that. You might call this 2, and you might say sub 1 into 2. And we're going to get a single equation just in terms of uh, G. So 4.15 is C, but we don't have a C, so it's $1 plus a pack of gum plus two other packs of gum. So subtracting the $1 from both sides and cleaning up, we've got one gum plus two gums, so that's three gums. We get three packs of gum cost $3.15. Divide by three. And we get the cost of one pack of gum. Now this is pretty important. Plug this back into equation number one. C is a dollar more than a pack of gum, and we know the cost of a pack of gum, so we get $2.05. That's our final answer. And you want to indicate it, you can put a therefore statement, so therefore a bar of chocolate costs $2.05. A nice little therefore statement. As long as your workflow is good and people can read it, you don't actually have to put therefore statements. Uh, but do try and make sure your thoughts flow nicely. It is presentable and readable. Because speaking as someone who has marked Euclid questions before, if we can't read it clearly, we don't often go hunting uh, for, for all the little bits of detail that might be there if you're not organizing things well. Uh, we have literally thousands of papers that have to be marked. Okay, so you want everything to be nice, neat, and clear in a good order. Uh, and saying, you know, you know, this is statement number one, this is statement number two, and, and here's how I'm using statement number one. And, and we'll plug this in and we'll rearrange this. State everything that you're doing clearly. It's not that big a deal on questions one, two, three. But it can be a bit of a problem when you're working on, say, question number six or seven and the time is running out, and you are just scribbling things down. If you are not clearing up your rough work, if you're not indicating what you're doing, you can lose marks on these written solution questions, so please be careful. Okay, so that's question number one. I will see you in the next video for question number two, and then three, and so on. Have yourself a wonderful day in the meantime.